Greetings dear viewer, I'm Petu, and this is how to actually climb to master Witchen. In this video, I will play a game in each tier from gold to master and show you how you can carry your team at every level. This video will feature four unique Shen builds from which you can choose your favorite. I will obviously be playing only Shen because he's the champion that got me from low to high low. Remember that you can always return to this video as you make your way through the ranks and bookmarking it might prove useful. Nani, okay, okay, okay. We patiently wait. And then we strike. Hello, Mundo. <laughs> I think he was not ready for this. And we out. Okay. We just unleashed the full potential of level 1 Lethal Tempo Shen. For the first build that I will show you guys today is a build that is designed specifically for carrying uh, lower tier games. This not, does not mean that the build is bad and it, that it should not be used in higher ELOs, but I think that this fits the game style of, of silver, gold and platinum ELO games the most. This is Belver, the new champion that is striking me here. I will kite her out a little bit, and then proc our lethal tempo. Ooh, fancy, fancy, fancy. Almost got to kill her there as well. So Belvest just got released, and I have no idea what kind of champion she is. I just know that she can stack up attack speed a lot. <laughs> but that is precisely what we will be doing as Shen as well. I'm gonna pick up the cannon here, and then kill these minions. And then maybe we can get a recall off. What I will do now here is pull the minions a little bit to the side so the cannon minion gets to go in. And actually, you know what? I will stay so that I get um, my um, bummy cinder. Because, like I said, the game has changed. And now bummy cinder is only 1000 gold since the second update to the durability patch of League. Unfortunately, I did not get the last hits that I wanted. I missed a couple for free and then I hit the Mundo there, but I will still have just enough gold to get my bummies in there. Let me talk a little bit about the idea behind this Lethal Shempa build. So, when I was playing versus a Kale, I tried to all in her level 1. I was running Grasp, you know, standard Shen Keystone, and then I died to a Kale level 1. And I was like, how is it possible that a hyper carry, hyper late game carry can beat me level one? I'm, I'm a melee bruiser. I, I, I'm, I'm a tank. I'm, I'm, I'm a strong laner. How, how do I lose to a KL level one? And then I realized the reason is lethal tempo. She was running lethal tempo. And then I thought, okay, well, what if I match KL? What, what if I go lethal tempo myself? And I, and I picked up lethal tempo and I made it work. And, and Little Tempo is actually really, really fun to play with. Because, because just attacking fast, that, that's, that's, that's a fun thing to do, you know. Mundo's movement here is a bit conspicuous. Uh, and I think I will be able to kill him. I have a ward still. I will just wait for my E cooldown. And patiently kill him. One more attack, nice. Ooh, and we get the cannon as well. So... For our mythic this game, we will be going for um, Sunfire Ages. And the reason why Sunfire Ages synergizes with this build is, first of all, we are looking to take extended trades. We are, we are taking extended fights, big fights, long duration fights. So we will get you to make use of that uh, Sunfire Ages um, kind of damage increase that it gives. And then when Sunfire Ages reaches max, stack, max stacks, it will give you Flame Touch, which makes your auto attacks burn the opponent. So then it also uh, kind of activates this burn radius around you. So then attack speed has some synergy with that because we can get more flame touches in. It does not necessarily like completely increase the DPS because the flame stacks uh, or, or the flame touch doesn't stack. If, if that's how, at least that's how I interpreted it. But you will get like more procs of the initial damage duration. Or like the initial tick of damage, so it will make your um, bummy cinder do more damage. Right now when we reach level 6, we want to be looking for kills. Uh, specifically in the bot lane. And here we have Mundo fighting me again. I'm kiting around this minion to stop him from uh, hitting the cleaver onto me. 
And now what I want to do is I want to shove out the wave and get a recall off. For my summoners, you might notice that I'm not running the typical ignite this game. And instead, okay, 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 now we will have to fight. Belveth doesn't beat me here. I have a huge minion wave, so that will be a kill for me. Very good, very good. I'm running the Pulse Fire Black Chroma style. This is one of my favorites, or actually probably my favorite Zen skin of all time. Uh, just because of the exclusivity, exclusi exclusivity and also for the fact that it's a uh, very smooth skin. Uh, I got that tower plating. How much do I need? I need 300 gold. Can I grieve for this? No, I really shouldn't grieve for this. Uh, I will recall here. And what I will purchase is this Ages of the Legion. And then boots. And here, special choice, a dagger. <laughs> Let, let's see what we will make use of the dagger later. Maybe build it into Berserker Greaves, maybe Witch End, who knows. Let's take a look at bot lane. Bot lane is fighting. Oh, they get a kill. Kaisa is actually 3 and 0. Very good gameplay. And we will just run back to lane. Uh, was I talking about the summer spells? I think I was. So for this game, the, the low elo carry build, the lethal tempo build, I really like running Ghost instead of Ignite. Because Ghost allows you to have extended fights and allows you to catch up to opponents. Because the, the problem with Shen and Sunfire Ages is normally you will not be in range of the opponents uh, for that long to make use of the uh, empower damage. <laughs> I keep getting hit by the cleavers. We will E-flash here to get the slow on Mundo, and then apply red buff, and then maybe Galio can lo loop around. Galio with the taunt. Uh, you can notice that Mundo is also running Ghost Flash, but he cannot escape me here. Whew. Unstoppable. 5 and 0. Then we look the bot lane. Uh, maybe we can block the gank that is coming in from here. Counter gank. That is also a word that we can use to describe the situation. Uh, let's try to get tower platings and then at the same time we will look bot lane. Alright, beautiful. Uh, items that synergize as well with the lethal shampoo build, which I, I, I honestly advise you to try this build because it's so much fun to play. Especially if you get ahead on it. You just, you just like become this un, un, unkillable damage machine that keeps uh, auto attacking really fast and it just looks funny when uh, Shen starts out working really fast. So let me get this plating. Beautiful. And then we will recall and purchase our Sunfire Ages. And then we can look for ultimate. Belvets in a world of trouble over there. We'll also pick up a control ward to help me along my journey. We could probably dive the bot lane uh, maybe with an ultimate onto Kaisa. Now, I don't expect your games to go as cleanly as this. Uh, however, I feel like the laning phase is the most important part of games like this. Actually, that's not necessarily true. I think we might even like over focus on the importance of laning phase. Uh, although, like if you think about how you could carry these games, uh, winning your lane is like the number one thing you can do because it uh, boosts the morale of your team and then also makes it easier to win those uh, mid game team fights. So it's not at all. And and as an added spy super by the way, I'm I'm getting some kind of uh, like ping spike right here. So I'm fighting with 150 ping, and this is actually good from an educational standpoint, since not every one of you uh, can play with a perfect internet connection. Now that we got the team fight down, I think I will attempt to fix the internet connection. Let's see. Uh, Step one is you disconnect every other device from the internet. Okay, right, right there. Uh, I disconnected my phone. Home. Um, ho okay, reset. I disconnected my phone from the home Wi-Fi, and apparently because it was in the charger, it started software updating at the same time. So that is where the ping spike came from. So, so these are actually like you might think this is completely irrelevant to the game, but then when you really think about it. A ping spike like that can be the difference between winning a game. So learning how to minimize uh, unwanted internet errors while gaming is also a part of climbing. And this is what <laughs> makes this video special for me at least. I try to give you guys like, like a full picture 
of how my climbing feels like. Now, what I kind of want to do is, I want to go for swiftness boots, because those allow me to stick on the targets, and then I will pick up a null magic mantle. You know why? Because we will build into Witch End, which synergizes amazingly well with the lethal tempo keystone. Take a look at uh, Rengar here, maybe we could ult, but Rengar can kill the Morgana for sure alone as well. Morgana is probably gonna walk back here after taking the vision cone. No, Morgana is actually roaming into bot lane, and I think Rengar is gonna ult and get the kill on that. What we will try to do is kill this Mundo once again, uh, but we cannot overchase without Ghost and Flash. If he steps so that I can get the taunt on, uh, the first thing you have to realize is that the taunt will not actually CC him, since he has his passive CC immunity. Uh, but what it will, it will do is, it will gap close. And I will actually start this trade off by just walking into range. And we noticed that Belveth was taking Heralds, uh, so we should probably meet Belveth here. And she is in her true form, and let's see if we can fight these guys 1v2, even though Belveth is in true form. Uh, what I'm doing here is, I'm constantly activating my uh, flame touch from immolate by auto attacking which will make the opponents burn and that is a successful okay i can't call it a 1v2 since galio ulted uh this game a bit of a stomp uh but i do not kind of want to give you guys the false uh i don't know presumption that every game will be like this so that is where uh, the rest of the three games come in but maybe this can serve as kind of uh, an educational showcase of what the true potential of playing Shen to a high level can really be and show you guys that you can uh, completely destroy the opposition. Uh, hopefully in the next games we will get to make some mistakes and learn from those and I, I mean I'm sure I will because uh, I haven't played this game perfectly either. We look at Kaisa now by the way if we want to ult onto her and Miss Cannon. There's the mistake that we wanted. <laughs> Not necessarily the, the, the precise mistake that we wanted, but you know, a mistake. Mundo is freezing this. I could actually stay here and try to kill him. This is greedy, yes, but we like greed. Uh, we'll get to shove this wave out. You know, the healing from the canister. And then we are still looking for ultimate opportunities. We've been quite greedy with our ultimates this game. <laughs> I was just on the edge of tower range there. And look, we can kill with one auto attack here, I think. Oh, how much HP was that, by the way? It was very close. It was very close. I think it was like 20 HP? I, I saw I saw 60 HP, but I thought it was after regening. <laughs> if we had Grasp there, that's a situation where Grasp is the difference between killing. Uh, then we see Belveth here. Legendary. We can kill this guy as well. I'm just gonna take one out of that, then back off from tower range. Oh, Rengar. Oi! Oi! <laughs> Still alive. <laughs> My passive shield saved me there. Go, kill him, kill him. Rengar, go. Oh. 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 Okay. Get this. Get this, get this. Oh, no, I didn't get the ultimate. I'm slow, I'm slow. I was slow at buying items. I should have looked at Rengar immediately. Oh, no. The perfect game is ruined. Enemy surrenders. All right, let's move on to the next game in Platinum Elo and see what kind of builds we can bust out there. Greetings, dear viewer. This is Axpeto from the future. Take a look at this statistic. Maybe it will convince you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, subscribers rank change. You know, I was fortunate enough that YouTube implemented this custom statistic, uh, custom statistic for me, which says that 69% of the people who subscribed to me went up in rank. Yeah, maybe you want to be a part of that 69%, yes? Nice. Red button, looking very juicy. Maybe press subscribe. Hmm? All right, guys, uh, enjoy the rest of the video. <laughs> Welcome to the second game of how to actually climb the master. With Shen. This game, we are running Speedy Shen. For our keystone, we have Face Rush. Now, Face Rush Shen was actually originally kind of popularized by a player 
uh, with the name of Speedy, wait, wait, no, 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 Slimy Hamster. Yes, he was Slimy Hamster in our Discord server. And he managed to actually climb up to Grandmaster Europe West by playing Face Russian. Now, I took an uh, early kind of gamble in trying to um, cheese the opponent in Tribe Rush at level 1. And since Jace knows that I will be waiting for him there, uh, he's not gonna fall into it and he's, uh, he would like play around it. So we will just submit and go back to lane and lane normally. But we did not go without getting a small advantage, which in this case was placing the sword up the lane over there. Because when we have a blade in this position, we have much more uh, kind of uh, danger created on Jace because we can threaten a pull through and then threaten a uh, short trade or even an all-in at these other levels. You might notice that I'm running Ghost Ignite and my plan is to go really fast with Nimbus Cloak. Our wills align. I will try to deny Jay's experience here from the melee minion and I think I managed to do that actually. Which is, uh, this is like insanely good for you. If you even deny one minion worth of experience from the opponent, what that will do is it will make you always level up faster than him. Obviously there are some like uh, exceptions to this rule because when you recall then you might lose more minions than the opponent and you no longer level up faster than him. But in general for the early game if you can deny a minion worth of experience then you should always do that. Looks like our jungler and mid lane got first blood and now I will attempt to push my blade further up the lane. He's gonna he, he, yes, okay. So, so why, why I went aggressively right there is I wanted to deny Jace from getting the cannon. So he positioned in a way where he's telling us basically that, okay, I want to take cannon by EQing. And we know that Jace blasts there and we know that he's still in lane. And what we will attempt to do now is probably kind of push this wave out slowly. Our jungler and mid lane are just harassing Kha'Zix over there. I'm gonna kill this minion and then walk towards Chase. I'm gonna press Ghost here. So that we get there faster. We kill uh, Kha'Zix and we get a Ghost extension. Chase flashes over the wall. Alright, let's see if we can kill Akali. Probably not. Unless... No! <laughs> it's a complete disaster. Oh my goodness. We died there. Uh, we're just gonna buy a ruby crystal and... Maybe a cloth armor? Yeah, and a control armor, and then we run back to lane. The wave is in a pretty balanced state, although the cannon minion will die, which is sad for us. I think it's great that we get early skirmishes like this because not every game is as controlled as the first game was, you know. Sometimes your team is gonna be doing dumb stuff and you're gonna be running into their jungle and you have to learn how to play those games out as well. I think actually most of the games when I was originally like way back season 7 climbing to Challenger, most of the games turned into absolute fiestas. And I think I was kind of forced in the fires of Euna Fiestas because I, I learned how to play these absolutely chaotic games. And Shen is actually a champion that shines when everyone is constantly fighting. So if you're running uh, lots of ability haste, maybe Ultimate Hunter, uh, that's another room page that we will showcase probably in the last game in Master Tier, the, the, the standard room page with the redemption build. But, but Shen in general is very good for uh, kind of. Uh, how do you say it, controlling those uh, Fiesta games where everyone is fighting, so you constantly have ultimate opportunities. Uh, and I, I, I believe those kind of situations rise up much more frequently in solo queue than people give credit for, because we want to think of this kind of ideal ideal game that people play their lanes correctly and lane matchups always go as intended and maybe macro is uh, like perfect but uh, the the reality of the situation is that it's it's never like that so you need to learn how to control your team now we're gonna give some warning things here because we when we can't move okay uh, right here we have a wave uh, under our tower we can't move but all we can do is ping for our team and pinging in general is so important like i i can't i can't overstress this like, pinging is so important on Shen. Like, you, like in general, pinging is important, okay. 
You have to tell, let your team know when your opponent is missing. You have to let your team know when they're doing something dumb. You have to let your team know what you want to do. But on Shen, if you're not spam pinging like on my way pings when you're ulting, you're doing something wrong. Because you want to be able to create those situations. I actually saw in a coaching session about Shen, this was uh, Coach Eragon is uh, a top lane regional, uh, no, uh, uh, positional coach in, I believe it was maybe like German League or British League. Anyways, anyways, good player, good top laner, solid understanding of the fundamentals and a great coach overall. Um, yeah, he, w he was coaching a Shen player and the Shen player, I, I, I looked at him and I was like, what is this guy, like, like, I wonder what he's doing. Something is different. Like something is not as it should be. And the Shen player was not using pings at all. Like in 20 minutes, he did not use a single ping. And and I just realized that oh, this is not something that is obvious to people. They they don't realize that pinging is like actually as much of uh, importance as actually playing the game. Now we look bot lane for ultimate. Mega two thousand series. I don't think Chase can cancel me here. We're gonna press Ghost here to catch up to uh, Nami. Nami is for sure dead here, we have Ignite. I think it's already enough. Yes, Zeri gets the laser kill. And now, instantly recall. Okay guys, don't waste any time here. Instant recall, go back to lane. Uh, this will eventually slow push towards us, although Jace is keeping it frozen pretty well. Uh, we want to pick up our Bummy Cinder, and then we purchase Boots, and just another Cloth Armor. Alright, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, okay. Let's see what we are doing here. Um, Zeri is strong. We want to play around bot lane. Um, I, w I would like to like inform my jungler that he should play bot lane, but I'm not gonna do that because I play with chat disabled. Now this is a position where you might say, okay, actually it's optimal to not keep chat disabled. You should either uh, or just like m mute your uh, teammates and then you can still talk to them, but. For me personally, I think typing takes up too much energy and just thinking about the uh, kind of things you might want to write also takes away from your concentration from the game. So I feel like pings can be relied on because they are fast and they don't convey any unnecessary information and you can get away with pinging like almost anything basically. If, like if you want to tell your team to back, you can even ping recall like this, alt click it, ping recall. And you can see in chat, Shen Recall, like that is that is some some advanced English technology right there. Uh, I don't know if I can help Polybar. I think I can. Yeah, he's he's fine. Beautiful, beautiful. Get the Taunt onto Kha'Zix and then we kill. And then we attempt to kill Jace here as well. Uh, Akali is not moving yet, so we can force this. And now we want to go behind the red buff so he can't EQ us. I, you see that? I'm, I'm using red buff as a barrier. And, and this is actually, uh, this is much more common than you might think. In the last game as well versus Mundo, we had a situation where there's a, there was a minion right here. And what I did is I kind of maneuvered around the minion so that uh, Mundo cannot hit a cleaver onto me. And these situations arise like really often and you can even create them. Like you can manip manipulate minions in such a way that uh, you gain this kind of body block advantage. So minions are not just kind of uh, small little towers, they are also meat shields. Now what Jace players like to do is they like to go here into Fog of War after having shot the wave and then they want to EQ over here. So what, what I do is I always position on the left side of the wave if I notice that Jace is going into Fog of War. What I will try to do now is ward this, okay, we notice he has control ward. Uh, how you do that ward by the way is by clicking between these two plants and then clicking on the second leaf from the uh, bottom of your uh, trinket range. You can just rewind if you want to see what I did there, but that's how I do it at least. And, and this ward is incredibly useful, even though in this situation like it just gave Jace free gold. But I got the information, okay, he has a pink ward there, and I didn't see Kha'Zix in the moment. So we had a small amount of information there that helped us. Um, we're gonna lose that one melee minion, but that's not gonna upset us too much. Let's get this, then we look um, mid lane. Actually, have Senna farming mid lane for some reason. How much gold to Frostfire Gauntlet? Okay, we need 150 gold. Uh, we're just gonna have to be really careful. Oh, 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 we can actually do something here, maybe. L look how aggressive Chase is playing. 
I'm gonna use this uh, jump, or her jump, and now we're just gonna ghost. And... <laughs> nice, that's a free kill, and now we recall immediately. Um, actually, we're gonna shove out mid lane, because look, Silas is getting top lane farm, and what we want to do is we want to basically fill the void that Silas is creating, and since Akali is dead and she, she is running Ignite and not Teleport, we can safely push this wave out. Uh, our bot lane also has insane pressure right here, and I managed to miss the cannon. And let's see if Jace can deal with Silas, no. That's fine. Uh, bot lane gets killed a couple of times, but it's all good. I'm gonna get one tower plating and then we're gonna run out. Just one more other like, Okay, that's beautiful. And we recall. I believe there was a control ward here, so we might... No, there was no control ward. Okay, Zeri is just popping off. She is actually space gliding them into oblivion. Okay! Big. Uh, Frostfire going to... And look at this! Perfect recall for plated steel caps as well. Now, look, look, look here, things. I'm gonna ping Silas uh, back, and then I'm gonna go there myself. Now Silas might take one more wave. Oh, no, it's perfect. It's... Yeah, it's really good. The wave crashes, and then we need Silas, Silas in mid lane, Silas in mid lane. Look, look I, I'm, I'm macro-controlling Silas, right? Like micro, micro-managing. I, I ping assistance to, uh, to mid lane, so that Silas will walk there, and then I get to lane versus Chase, because I do not want to be playing versus Akali, right? There, there is no point in playing versus Akali when I have just built plated steel caps. Uh, Frostfire Gauntlet is uh, universally good, obviously, because it gives both armor and magic resistance. But, uh, the plated steel caps will only really help me versus Jace. And you can see how well that trade went just because I have face rush. Because normally, as Grasp Gen, what would happen there is after Jace E's you, you're kind of slowed, you're knocked away, and you have no E. So you can't gap close, and you lose the trade afterwards. But with face rush, there is, like, constant opportunities to get this more extended trades off and now look how much i can I, I can kind of control this lane because because normally like chase would be controlling this lane for sure and we're just gonna take these kind of short trades and then maneuver around with our movement speed and right here I'm, I'm gonna press ignite so we get a uh, nimbus cloak movement speed and look how we're out maneuvering this guy like we we, we don't we don't need to do anything crazy <laughs> We can, just, we can just play with our movement speed, like movement speed is such an underrated stat and it's just being patient there and not engaging onto the opponent. Now we have to run because Akali has 5000 gazillion dashes and you never want to underestimate how much of a gap she can really close in a matter of seconds. Uh, I can I can QW here on Silas, although they did not even use any other there. And look, I will ping my ultimate, I will ping my ultimate here. Uh, recall is 7 seconds, right? So I will have my ultimate immediately when I'm back. Uh, Silas might get interrupted here. I'm buy, buy this real quick and then instantly look at Silas. Then we buy control work of bot lane. Wait for our health to be almost full. It doesn't have to be full because you're regening when you're walking back to lane. And now I'm gonna ping my team that I'm gonna be splitting bot lane. And I have my ultimate ready, so we have to ping that. We look top lane, alright, it's done. Silas needs to go back to top lane. And then uh, Zeris and Navolibar will be controlling mid lane, trying to seize the tier 2 tower. And we want to be looking at them constantly. Now, our job as Shen is to deny the shutdown on Zeri, okay? What does the opposing uh, like players think? I'm not gonna loot Senna there, no way, no way. Like, even if I save Senna, that's never worth, in my opinion. Because what we want to do is we want to keep Zeri alive. So we have to have our uh, kind of camera always on Zeri. This is 650 gold, this is three times more gold than, than uh, killing Senna gives you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And look, we have to taunt this... Uh, ooh. Okay, Nami got the shutdown. That's actually really huge. Let's see if we, we can play this kind of slow. Okay, I got one Empire Q. And look, we kill Nami here. We kill Nami here. We blast off with our ghost technology. And then we just run. We just run. Like, th this is how ghost works. This is so crazy good. Like, I, I genuinely think that ghost might be better than Flash Shen. At least in some games, not in every game, but in games where the opponents don't have, like, let's say, uh, I don't know, I feel like Ghost is better. When I take Flash, it's usually against, like, let's say, Anivia, Jarvan, people where uh, if I don't have Flash, I can't get away. I just, I just think Ghost is really good, and I think the best way to showcase that is through my gameplay. Oh, look at that beautiful wave right there. It's ripe and prepared for me. 11 HP cannon and we just pick it up. Uh, we're gonna clear this ward and look. It's it's the demon fire build, guys. We're unleashing the demon fire this game. 
the Demon Fire build was actually uh, buffed uh, significantly in the latest patch because they gave Frostfire Gauntlet and alongside other uh, Immolate Mythics a flat 100 health boost. And what that does obviously with De Demonic Embrace, it, it gives also more AP. And since, since these uh, Immolite Mythics are now better, uh, they outshine all the other possibilities, kind of maybe going for more supportive Mythics, something like a, a Locket, which I have played in the past and I think is good, but I think now uh, the Immolite Mythics are just uh, kind of, uh, how do you say, they, they outshine all the other Mythics on Shen, which in some sense is kind of disappointing, because you don't have much item variety, but then again, at least, at least you have a good mythic, so, so so you're not in a situation where you don't have anything to build. Um, let's see our gold amounts there. Uh, 1350 is enough for uh, upgrading to Giant's Belt and getting the Blasting Wand. And we also have our ultimate. So generally what I want to do is I want to time my resets with my ultimate. Uh, because this way I'm at my strongest when I'm arriving in fights. I can even being Volibear here that I want to fight in the mid lane. Maybe he will realize that I have my ultimate after I ping it like this. Look, I'm always pinging this stuff. And maybe we can catch on to the Swain. Uh, let's see. Is it gonna run there? I think this tower is dead. Yeah, I can't save it anymore. Um, and Jace is probably not gonna greed. He's gonna recall after that. Alright. I'm actually getting so sweaty from this... Uh, Rap God <laughs> yeah, yeah, gameplay commentary that I'm doing. Okay, then we look at... Oh, this is good. This is good. We win this. We played patiently. Look, we played patiently. Now we'll... Remember Swain has no flash from last fight. Finish off that guy. Try to use W to block some damage. Uh, I'm gonna taunt the Akali here. Because I'm healthy, but I just want to... Stop them from catching on to... And look, we have Senna coming in from the backlines. I think Akali just gave up already. This is completely tilted. And then we double it there to kind of... Say, no, Silas got... Uh, <laughs> he got uh, hammered into tower range. And 1250 for the demonic embrace. Absolutely beautiful. This tower is gonna give us some gold. And then we are gonna... Rico right here, although the mountain track is coming up, but Volibear can take it by himself, I'm pretty sure. We pick up the demonic embrace, and then we look at what objective is up. Look guys, important, important, what objective is gonna be up? Baron, in one minute, where do we go? Bot lane, mirroring pressure, opposite side of the map. Uh, now we want to ping our team to try to get uh, top lane tier 1. Because if they pressure over there, then uh, we will have an advantage over here. And if the opponents react by putting one or two members into the bot lane, we can ult to the top side and create a, a kind of instantaneous advantage there and then pressure Baran. Because if you look at our damage, we have uh, Sen Zeri, which are very fast at taking Baron. So we can maybe do it in, let's say, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. I don't know what is realistic. I think 10 seconds is already realistic. Sounds like a really short time, but when you look at our items, we have Zeri with Shield Bow, Phantom Dancer, and then we have Senna with some stacks. It's probably not even too unrealistic. Swain, you can't do this. Now, what we have to do is we have to dodge the E, right? Dodge the E or dodge the game. Classic advice. We have our Demonic Embrace, so we can win extended fights. We're gonna kill Swain. We have uh, 15 seconds on our ultimate. Uh, the opponents are taking down mid lane and Jace is dead, so they have no one to respond to me. Now what I will do is I will actually ping, uh, ping Baron here. Ping Baron. L look, look, because the opponents have to react to me. And if, if we do this correctly, we can get Baron here for free. I I'm trying to ping it. Maybe my team doesn't realize there is a Kha'Zix over there. I'm just gonna ult right now to escape. Because I, I don't want to take any unnecessary risks, okay? I knew that Akali and Nami had recalled to try to catch me, and we saw Kha'Zix here, but we know that Kha'Zix doesn't have any hard CC to stop my ultimate, so I'm just gonna fairly say, okay, you got me, I'll use my ultimate to escape, nothing more, nothing less. We're gonna clear the vision here with Oracle's Lens, and probably try to attempt this Baron, 
Uh, I think it's completely fine to do this because we are not taking any damage basically. Volibear is so tanky that we can just kind of force this around. Akali is still in the mid lane, they're quite late. I think my 10 seconds was a bit... <laughs> uh, uh, how, how do you say it? O overly optimistic. I think this took maybe 15 seconds. Uh, quite, quite okay tank. And now we don't want to engage, we want to recall, we want to play for Mountain Soul. Yeah, and as for our items, uh, we want to pick up some magic resist. Force of Nature could be a good option here, but I will actually opt for Abyssal Mask. A quite spicy item which was buffed in the latest patch. And what Abyssal Mask does here is it, 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 it empowers my Volley Bears and my Silas' damage. So when we are fighting in, I'm probably usually ulting in on maybe Silas. Uh, unless I'm having to save backline, but the backlines are pretty safe. Although they do have assassins, so maybe I'm ulting backline. Anyways, Abyssal Mask empowers our magic damage dealers, and since I'm running Demonic Embrace, it also empowers my damage, since I'm doing a lot of magic damage from my Q naturally, and then additionally from my Demonic Embrace burn. 45 seconds on the ultimate, uh, now we have to ping our team back, because we say, okay, look, we don't have ultimate yet, you guys have to chill a little bit, and we're gonna apply pressure on the sideline. However, they are already taking a fight, which is kind of unfortunate. Probably the right play for me would have been to immediately um, group up with my team instead of splitting. And I'm actually now regretting the fact that I did not do that. I still have 15 seconds. My whole team gets wiped there. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Uh, let's see what we can do. We have to dodge that so that Swain doesn't get free HP. The opponents are now reacting to me. Uh, so what I will do is I will just make sure that I don't die here. It's extremely important that I don't die before the mountain trade, so we have an advantage there. Um, I'm gonna take a short trade with Jace and run out with Face Rush. Uh, we, just, we saw that Kha'Zix was trying to follow up on me. So what I will do is I will just jump over this wall. I will not take anything fancy. And here... This is actually gonna be pretty hard. Ooh, wait, Senna! Senna! And that's just Jace outscaling me there. Completely outscaled by Jace. Uh, I, I don't know what the Senna did there because I was kind of expecting Senna to ult me for a shield and I could have turned that around. Let's see, my death timer is 30 seconds. Uh, we will not get kind of tilted because of this death and quite. Quite the contrary, actually, we will just use it as an opportunity to ult straight from base. Silas is going in for a play which I necessarily do not agree with, although he does get the Nami and then hits an amazing E onto the Akali. Uh, now we're gonna ping that I'm respawning in two seconds, so we can ult a Volibear, and we will do this, we will do this Volibear, let's go. Let's see if the Kha'Zix flashes out, alright. Back off a little bit, back off, back off, back off. We're gonna use Oracle Science here to give us some vision. Chase is probably gonna underestimate us and we are just gonna run in and one tap him. And now with what we, what we want to do is we want to force Kha'Zix out. So I'm gonna press Ghost right here. I'm gonna scout uh, these bushes for Kha'Zix. Okay, there is no one here. You might say this was a waste of Ghost. I say it was uh, creating an opportunity and creating space for our team. We need 200 gold for finishing Abyssal Mass, so I'll attempt to clear the enemy topside, although Kha'Zix probably went straight to Raptors after uh, he gave up these things, but I will probably get the top lane wave. Kha'Zix could be here, which would be dangerous for me, so I'm not gonna waste my E. Alright, I'll clear this wave and then try to steal the Krugs and recall. Our wills the nice thing about going Frostfire with Demonic Embrace is the fact that your uh, Frostfire area of effect actually applies spell effects. So this will make it so that you can get AoE burn on the minions, which makes your wave clear a little bit faster. I'm gonna greet for the Krugs here, because they don't necessarily give me anything uh, of value right here, and I'm actually gonna just prefer the tempo. So by tempo I mean kind of the timely advantage that I gain from getting an earlier recall. Uh, and we're gonna finish our Abyssal Mask. We are level 15, no, nowhere close to level 16. Usually uh, the only kind of case where you want to take jungle camps before a team fight is if you can gain a level up, because a level up at this stage in the game is worth like, let's say, 1,500 gold or something. It's almost 2,000 gold that a level up is worth. We have 20 seconds on ultimate. Maybe that's uh, overestimating the level worth. 
Mm, our boys are kind of dead. We're gonna have to dodge the wave there, dodge the bubble as well. Uh, Silas is here. Oh, I could have. Uh, we're gonna clear this. One minute thirteen until uh, Baron. We might be able to take this inhibitor uh, momentarily. We dodge by the Akali. We have our Mountain Soul. We're quite strong. We're gonna taunt Akali here. Uh, not gonna overextend. Okay, gonna get this and then we're gonna ult on Senna. I have eyes everywhere. I am the Omnivision man. Okay, unfortunately Silas dies to Akali while I'm ulting. <laughs> I cannot save everyone, guys. I cannot save everyone. We see Akali over here. Uh, we're just gonna run it down mid lane though. Uh, what we what we need to do when Akali uh, is gonna flank us, we need to stop her from killing Senna. So Senna gets a ooh, Senna misses the root. She's gonna jump over the wall there for sure. And Senna is gonna try to kill Akali, which she accomplishes. But we can get off. Okay, we're not gonna overchase this. Just do Baron, just do Baron fast. Like, uh, we can do it really fast with Zeri. Team, 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 Baron, 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 Baron. <laughs> Come, team! I can't ping. Can, can, <laughs> guys! It's free! It's free real estate, bros. Bros keys. Okay. Now? How about now? How about now? Okay, now they want to do it. Beautiful. Mm. I didn't realize Akali had ultimate there. Actually, I think Akali's ultimate cooldown is so short that it uh, kind of came back up after the fight. I tried to taunt Akali in stealth. Oh, wow, Zeri, wow. Okay, we can end here, we can end here. Beautiful gameplay by Zeri. I think overall solid game by me as well. There were a couple of opportunities where I could have done more and I could have grouped up with the team instead of splitting at that one point which cost us uh, four deaths and some tempo. I could have ended the game maybe five minutes earlier. But sometimes you make mistakes, actually always make mistakes and you just have to learn from them. And we're gonna be finishing off this game and then moving on to Diamond Elo where I will be showcasing another Shen build and another fantastic gameplay commentary. So, see you guys there. Greetings, and welcome to the third game of how to actually climb to master, which Shen. In this game, we are playing versus the devil himself. We are facing Teemo in the top lane. For our runes this game, we've gone back to grasp. However, we are running something special in the secondary tree. Let's start off with shield bash, second wind, standard stuff, then we take unflinching, instead of uh, Revitalize or Overgrowth. Now, I've always taken Revitalize. For the past three years, always took Revitalize. However, having played some other champions recently, I realized the value of unflinching. Because Revitalize, yeah, it gives you some nice shields, gives you some bigger ultimates, all of that stuff. But CC can be much more impactful than uh, that damage that you're gonna be blocking with your Cs, uh, your uh, passive shields. So. For example, here, in this case, they have Teemo top lane, who's gonna be blinding me, he's gonna be slowing me with shrooms, they're gonna have Braum stuns, Braum slows, oh, uh, what? There's five people here, by the way. What? Were they expecting us to invade or something? <laughs> they, they think I'm invading, because I always invade, I think. Uh, I'm gonna give this Ola uh, Udur a 3Q leash, and then go back to lane. So yeah, we took unflinching, and I generally think it's good into their composition. They actually are running a Zeri mid lane, which is quite interesting. Have to see how that one pans out. Uh, as for the secondary runes, I'm running one of my all-time favorite runes, Nimbus Cloak. Now what Nimbus Cloak allows me to do is allows me to use Ignite as a kind of pseudo movement speed spell. So sometimes instead of wasting Flash, for example, to escape or to play aggressively, I can use Nimbus Cloak to reposition myself with Ignite. Uh, and as for the secondary... Uh, or the other rune from the, uh, what is it, sorcery, I took Transcendence because it's the most consistent option that we have. Timo is gonna hit level 2 here, uh, I'm gonna just take the farm, he's gonna poke me in my face and that's okay. What you have to understand 
is that in these uh, matchups, these range matchups, you just have to be patient. You have to be willing to give up farm in order to maintain health. Looks like Nautilus dies in the bot lane and this is already panning out to be quite the interesting game. Timo is probably gonna look to blind me here. I'm gonna take a short trade and then run out. I'm not gonna overextend for that trade because I know that Timo will just blind me. So there's no reason to keep following up with auto attacks after the couple of ones that I did during the town have timed out. Uh, we'll be taking W next. Uh, as for our build this game... I, I do feel that Frostfire is the best uh, mythic right now for Shen, and I don't really see a reason to go for anything else than, than the tank mythics, Sunfire or Frostfire, depending on the game. Uh, the Bami Cinder is just too, too much of a <laughs> valuable item for Shen, especially since it gives you the wave clear that you so desperately need as a champion. Bot lane gets quite a good turnaround and things are looking much better already. Odor is still chasing the Diana into their jungle. Let's see if I can get this range minion. And actually, so manages to solo kill this Odor is popping off. The lethal tempo Tiger stance technology is destroying the opposition. Let's look at mid lane. Katarina is doing stuff. I'm just gonna keep last hitting. I can't push this wave out fast enough for uh, Timo to miss any farm. So what we will do is we'll just keep last hitting. And eventually it will slow push towards their tower. And then we will start out attacking the wave a bit more. Uh, I might even ping my Udur to stay top lane, but no, he should reset and he's doing the correct thing. I'm not gonna weigh, I'm not gonna mess with his pathing. Uh, the one thing that I do want to mention is that pinging in general is very helpful. Like sometimes pinging is like actually more important than like playing the game. Uh, in in some sense, like sometimes you, it's okay to miss farm just so you can ping. Like uh, you can't do everything at once, so sometimes you have to prioritize. And let's say, for example, Timo moves towards mid lane, then I will prioritize pinging that information. But obviously, I would like to get all the farm possible. Actually, I think that looks like a quite good... I think the Udur is gonna pop off here. Like, Udur has backed with Mercury's threads, and I think he can just wipe them here. Honestly, the, uh, this guy is unstoppable right now. Uh, he, he's just popping off. We're, we're still chilling in this lane. We, we don't need to take any unnecessary risks. Uh, the Timo is just farming. And if he's okay with farming, then I'm completely okay with farming. Ah, still miss. <laughs> yeah, you see, the, the moment I try to go in, we all already take too much damage. So there was there was really no reason to try and trade there, because if you look at his, he's running uh, Exhaust Lethal Tempo. So he's, he's kind of the master of these <laughs> longer fights. Uh, if Udur comes top lane, then we can look for a kill on the team, but at this, at this point we don't need to necessarily do anything uh, proactive in the lane phase, and instead we will do something proactive with the ultimate probably soon. You can see that I'm always using my W to block damage, and then using Q's to last hit, because it gives me more attack range, meaning that I don't stay in the threat range of Teemo's auto attacks for long. Always using those cues for extended auto attack range. The, the parts of Shen's laning phase where you don't want to use Q to last it are when you are playing aggressively and you have a good play positioning. Now I'm gonna think that I have my ultimate ready. <laughs> oh, I thought the minions would trigger that. <laughs> Last thing go. Like, ah uh, man, it's so hard here, because uh, there's probably gonna be an opportunity to ult, but if I ult here, I'm gonna lose a massive amount of gold, and Timo is gonna gain a lot of gold from tower plate things. I could try to uh, look for an E-flash onto the Timo. That, that, that's a possibility, if he walks under tower, but I don't think he's gonna make that mistake. Now we look at bot lane. If they don't hard force it, I don't want to ult. Do, 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 do. I mean, Timo is not even harassing me that much. My W was bad there. I could have blocked much more auto attacks. Oh, he's just poking. Maybe, maybe here he overextends and we can look for any flash. No, every time I say it, it's like he's listening, man. Like he's listening. Ah, annoying. I'm quite low. He's not running Ignite, though. Uh... I wonder how we will get out of this situation. Now, we have a couple of options. Either we recall and sack the wave, we ult the bot lane and sack the wave, 
or then we kill Teemo under tower. Now which one of those shots the most promising? Obviously killing Teemo under tower shot pretty good. But that one is the most riskiest option as well. Because if he manages to flash my flash, that's probably gonna be a dead axe battle. Oh, maybe, maybe? On the next auto attack. No, no. He's not overextending for it. He, he's spacing quite well. He, I think he respects my E-flash. If you look, he's, he's not giving me the opportunity to go for this. I'm gonna ult on Udor soon. Broom, broom, broom. <laughs> and we just spank them. Oh, wait, there could be shrooms. I need to stay uh, in the lane. Like, oh, there can be shrooms everywhere. We can't walk on this, like, because Teemo players, like, always put their uh, shrooms somewhere around the minion wave. Oh, it doesn't quite crash. Uh, that's unfortunate. Well, that's the same life, I guess. We could even sell Doran's shield and get my Frostfire finished. How crazy is that? I'm gonna do it. <laughs> first back, first back Frostfire, nothing else. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a new one. <laughs> I, I think it's okay to do this. I don't know, is it legal? I think it's legal. Because this way I can go for a soul kill onto the team, or probably. Udor is kind of... Turning out, to, it's not, he, he's not really a win condition, but he's uh, turbo accelerating the game. Let's look at bot lane. Nautilus is gonna be farming over there. Teemo is still in lane. Zeri in the mid lane, recalling. Uh, I want to get boots. Also want to kill this Teemo. Hey, I got some Frostfire damage onto him. Good stuff, guys. I'm gonna place a control ward down in the river and then since the wave will be slow pushing towards me I'm gonna look for an all-in. This is kind of preparatory work for the all-in since I'm establishing vision control so that I know that Teemo is not baiting me, for example, with Diana. Oh, he's kiting me quite well. He has tier 2 boots. Okay, we see Diana in the bot lane. Man, he's being so annoying. I'm gonna back off a little bit here, bait him in. And then we finish him with the E-flash. You, you can see that that is like such a classic Shen move. Like you just run backwards when you don't have your Q and passive shield. And wait, you wait for your passive shield to come back up. Then you Q. Then you will have the shield, then you will be doing damage, and then you kill the op opponent. It, it, it's such a standard move, but I think, like, uh, newer Shen players don't realize how important managing your passive shield is. Like, whenever I'm fighting, I'm always looking at my passive shield cooldown. That is the most important cooldown that I'm looking at. Oh, I can... Yeah, yeah this is a swiftness boots game. Like, 100% this is a swiftness boots game. Because I, ne I need to be able to catch up on to Zeri, Vayne, uh, Teemo, and especially, especially Teemo. He's gonna be slowing me with the shrooms, so just getting more slow resistance on top of the unflinching will be really valuable. Now I can look for an ultimate on the bot lane, by the way. I, I will ping this aggressively just to let my team know that I'm, I'm down to do this. Uh, I might have just turbo that for my team. <laughs> I mean... I guess. <laughs> Maybe it was a mistake. <laughs> I'm gonna dodge this brown Q. Uh... Not like this. <laughs> that was a disaster, man. Oh, how about those aggressive ultimates, huh? They have three kills to enemy laners. A complete mistake. I think it was still right to go for... Like... Hmm... 
when I think about that play, like I had nothing to do in top lane, so I think the right play is to go go for something in bot lane. But I think the way the Nautilus engaged was wrong. Uh, maybe it was because I play pinged so aggressively. Uh, <laughs> okay, guys, I think we just made the game more interesting. That, that is what we did. Gave the opponent bot lane a, a little bit of gold, you know, a little bit of confidence, so we can we can make the game more realistic. It wasn't nice, you know, we were stomping the game, so we have to have to bring that educational value back into it. Okay, first card doing a lot of damage. Because I, I, I do think the right thing at that moment is to make a play bot lane. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe, maybe I'm delusional right now. Maybe I should have been more kind of sparing with the pings, you know? I could have just pinged a couple of times so he doesn't like turbo int it. Oh, that's all right. Let's focus on what we have uh, remaining in front of us. Mistakes happen. They do happen. You just have to realize, okay, it happens. I'm gonna do something else now. I'm gonna do something better. I'm gonna work on what I did wrong. We have 15 seconds remaining on our ultimate cooldown. I mean, we could try to go for some kill on this demo with Ignite. Uber is just trying them down. What I'm looking at is the opposing champion, when I move for a taunt, I'm like uh, patiently looking at the opposing champion, looking at their attack rhythm. So so a ranged champion always has an attack rhythm, they go like this, boom, boom, boom. So I'm trying to match that rhythm so that I'm matching my taunt with his attack, right? Because when he attacks me, he's gonna walk backwards a little bit, he's gonna stand still. So that is when you can hit the max range taunt. If you just time your max range taunt when the opponent is walking away, you're never gonna hit it. You're gonna have to time it at the same time uh, as... Oh! The Teemo is here. I saw him with my Frostfire. I'm gonna tank for the... Wait. <laughs> okay, look mid lane. Let's try to, try to dive Kaiser. No? Okay, all good. Uh, okay, look guys, we bust out the Night's Vow. Can I write Knight? The Night's Vow for Beaten Build. So I We're gonna put the Night's Vow on the Udur, and he's gonna be unkillable. Okay, Katarina. We could also go for Anathemas. Hmm. Anathema is actually a really good item, but who would we put it on here? You can't reduce true damage. That is the problem. You can't reduce vain true damage. Yeah, no, Anathema is not good here. We don't have a clear person to put it on. It would be vain, but since you can't reduce true damage, I don't think it's worth. It's not like all of Vayne's damage is true damage, but a, 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 a significant portion of it is. A lot of kind of skill when it comes to Shen is is realizing who you want to play around on your team. Just identifying those good players so you get to ult the good players. Like for example right now, after that playing bot lane, uh, even though it was kind of uh, instigated by me, I, I, I'm more hesitant to, to put ultimates onto Nautilus or to put ultimates onto Kai'Sa and I'd rather trust the decision making of Udur and uh, Katarina since they have shown that they can make good decisions. You're, you're kind of constantly evaluating your teammates, not in the sense that you put blame on them, but rather in the sense that you can provide the best uh, value for your team. I'm gonna tank a little bit. Oh my! We just exploded! Wait, what? Okay, this is completely new to me, by the way. The, this Zeri champion is completely new to me. Like, what was that? The laser did 450 damage. And was this the ultimate, like, AoE? That was some explosion, man. This Zeri just... just what? Okay, this, this is new to me. I, I, I thought Zeri was, you know, sustained damage. Champion, not burst champion. Okay, but can you recommend me the right items? Yes, thank you. 
that was that was something. Is she going for Ludens Echo? This is this is some curse build, like this is some Korki build stuff. Maybe this is meta that I just don't know about because I haven't played the game enough. <laughs> 20 seconds on the Cloud Drake. Uh, we were looking to... Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna have ultimate in time. Is it wrong to split push here? I think it is wrong to push. I think we have to move to our team. Diana is also here. Vayne is already dead. Udra is making moves. Big money plays. Uh, since we killed Vayne, they can't really contest the Drake. So I don't also have to group up for that, so I can stay in top lane. Look at how <laughs> little impact our top laners have had. But that is that is my fault. I could have done much more this game, uh, in my opinion. Although, like as for the laning phase, Timo is such a safe laner, or well, safe and safe. But but he he kind of uh, negates my opportunity for plays. In general, any any champion that can shove you in can. Like cripple Shen. <laughs> I wanted to show him that I can dodge his Q. <laughs> I'm getting ward control. Don't blind me. That's... Oh, I think I have my first ward up yet. I'm gonna open the Kaiser. Hmm. I've been a wasted ultimate. Maybe I can look for a flash down there. No, I guess not. I was looking for a flash down onto the back line. A curse down rage. <laughs> yeah, we make those picks. Oh, that that Jerry laser hurts. Did they buff it or something? It, it, there must have been some changes that I missed. It's like a Lux ultimate. Look at that thing. <laughs> oh. yeah, that's quite interesting, actually. Jeez! It did 600 damage! <laughs> nice! Okay. Item. Night Spell. Let's purchase. Then I want to purchase some magic resist. Ooh, this could be an abyssal mask game actually. Since we have Katarina and Udur both doing magic damage. This guy has 25 stacks on Mayas, by the way. Mayas gives him 125 ability. 145 ability power. What an item. Mayas. Crazy. I, I wish Mayas would work on Shen. I would buy Mayas. May I send? Wait a minute. Have we cracked the code? Have we cracked the code, guys? <laughs> AP just isn't that good on Shen, you know? But maybe. Unless. What if? Why not? <laughs> what if we went Bummy Cinder into Mayas? How cursed is that? Sounds pretty cursed to me. Mayas. Yeah. Can I type? No, oh, I can't, apparently. Right now, my job is to keep an eye out on my team. And in the team fight, I'm gonna press my Knight's Vow on someone. They'll probably be Katarina, to be honest. Looks like Udur is not dying anyways. I'm gonna get some control over this area. Okay, Nautilus is kind of hooking in. Here we go. <laughs> they are just fast. Maybe I can look for a flash taunt. I saw some angles there, but I didn't want to commit. <laughs> Forbidden taunting, uh, attacking over the wall. Zeri is trying to snipe. Urur has a, a, has a backdoor angle there. I have to dodge those lasers. I tried to hit the laser girl as well, but I only got vain. I got Teemo there. I'm gonna have to back now, I don't wanna die. Okay, look, I'm gonna stand on top of these guys. <gasps> the laser! Oh no! Oh no! A laser in this room! Okay, Udur! Okay! 
What? He's mauling them. The bear king. What the? <laughs> this is how to actually climb the diamond. Uh, no, how to actually climb the master with Udur. <laughs> In 22 minutes. <laughs> I should have suspected the Udur for the entire game. <laughs> okay, okay. Abyssal Mask Tech. Because it gives us our team damage. Mm. Yes, purchase this. Yes, nice. 27 on ultimate. Uh, we will go instant to Cloud Drake. My guy, Udur is popping off. Look at us Inters. Me, Shen, Kaisa, Nautilus. Ah. And then. These wide-shouldered individuals just taking all the weight. Hey, that's a skill as well. Learning how to get carried is actually underrated. Like I swear, you watch all these streamers, they're always talking about, you know, you have to be the carry, you have to be the carry, you have to 1v9. At least that's maybe the the, the image that uh, lower elo players have, that you have to be 1v9 player. But look at me, man. I don't know, somehow I managed to climb my way up to 1k LP challenger on two servers. And the skill that I have is getting carried most of the time. I like making myself lightweight, you know. Never tilting, never surrendering, playing around the strong members of our team. Honestly, it's it's, it's part of the Shen kit. And I'm, I'm not undermining myself because, you know, I, I, I'm quite good at some aspects. Like, I'm, I'm okay at the game, okay? I, I know some stuff. I can do some stuff, you know. But... I'm not faker, right? But somehow you still get high win rates, right? And how you get those high win rates is by identifying how you win games. It's not about what looks cool. Sometimes you go for those nasty taunt flashes and it's okay. But sometimes the better option is to just still relax. In this game as well, I could have relaxed more. I, I didn't need to make that aggressive play on the bot lane. I could have just chilled. And actually this is something that uh, sending help uh, Talked, well, like I was talking to Shending Help yesterday and we were talking about different ways of uh, using ultimate uh, in different kinds of games and one of the things that uh, he uh, kind of said is that he likes to be really picky with his ultimates when your team is ahead like it might just be that you don't even use your ultimate for 5 minutes straight stuff like this because you don't need to force anything if you're just so ahead that you keep getting all the resources so instead of making that play to bot lane which cost us 3 kills right we died. Three three people died. Uh, instead of making that play, I could have just waited. I could have chilled and then uh, denied a play that they were gonna make on bot lane. Because if you look at it from the opponent's perspective, I actually... Okay, I've been doing some thinking and I was wrong when I talked. What? Okay. Something's wrong with this Zeri champion. Was that one W? Oi, 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 oi. Have we placed Night Swan anyone? It's on... It's on Katarina, right? What if I put it on the Udur champion? I, I want to be buffing this mid wave, just so it takes more time for them to clear. So anyways, as I was saying, uh, we didn't need to go for that bot play when Udur was topside diving Teemo with Katarina. We could have instead just probably r run to mid lane, that was probably the right thing to do. And then from the opposing point of view, they think, okay, they just put two people top lane, we want to make a play bot lane, right? Because Diana was there. So then I should have just used my ultimate as a like Uno reverse card for the Diana that wants to dive our backline or dive dive our bot lane. I mean, uh, so yeah, when you're ahead, you can be really picky with ultimates and just don't use it for a long time because the threat of having Shen ultimate can be really meaningful sometimes, right? Sometimes it's, it's, it's better to not ult than ult because. When the opponents know that you have an ultimate available, now, okay, this doesn't necessarily apply to Giga Low Elo, uh, because they might not even be, they don't even know probably that Shen ult exists. They, they see it once and then they forget about its existence for the next five minutes until they see it again. Uh, and we're gonna finish our Abyssal Mask here. I'm not gonna overextend for this wave since they were co collapsing on the top lane. Abyssal Mask, um, you know what could be good here? This, this controversial buy, stopwatch, controversial, but I, I think it might be valuable here, so I'm gonna purchase it. So this is just useful for, for one fight. Uh, as I was saying, the threat of Shen ultimate is, is valuable, because in diamond games, for example, if the enemies know that you have Shen ultimate, 
they will play more passively naturally because they will not go for those all in place. So in some sense Shen is really a free elo champion because you're applying a constant debuff into the game. Because you, you constantly have a threat of Shen ultimate. So that make that affects the way the other players play the game. So even if you don't make any flashy plays, just being Shen does something already. But if you waste your ultimate, then you no longer have that threat. This is the same for champions like Blitzcrank, for example. If you have a Blitzcrank hook... Okay, Udur, let's go. Let's maul them. We're mauling. <laughs> okay. I like it. I like it. What? Dude. Did that guy die from the Ludus Echo proc or what? Okay. We flash it! <laughs> no flashy plays, right? I'm gonna use Q to gain back some energy. The series types are coming in, I could have QW there to save Nautilus maybe. Oh yeah! But did it hit, man? <laughs> It didn't even hit, brother. So I go. <laughs> How wide is that laser range? This, this is some technology that I've never seen before. I swear. A series sniper one shots. Okay, can we get this? Can we get it though? <laughs> oh no, the snipes are coming in. We can't get it. An objective bounty has been claimed. I can go for stopwatch. Is it cursed? I mean, uh, Zonia's Hourglass, is it cursed? Yeah, a little bit. Do I care? No, not really. <laughs> well, this is looking like... Uh, I don't know what this looks like. What champion? <laughs> I don't think any champion builds these items. <laughs> but this is probably the most cursed Zen build that I've ever done. <laughs> Maybe showing into me, I'll just take these Krugs. We really need to find a way to kill that Seri. This was probably really into uh, fight uh, under tower anyways. Because we could have just uh, like settled for taking the Drake. Which would not be settling at all really since it would be like, like, like a clear win condition to get that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 30 seconds until my Baron. That's completely fine. We will play for it. I feel like we are lacking in range, right? The opponents have lots, lots more range than us. So that's why kind of fighting under tower is really difficult. Um, there is in bot lane. Hey, Timo is here. We, we can just force it. Look, Timo is in bot lane. Like, what can Timo do? Timo can't TP. He's running exhaust. So we just get a free baron. It's quite simple, really. We don't have to do anything fancy. Put this guy's card go stone fight. Okay, let's go. Uh, I don't wanna engage there. Okay. We got one. Udo's running in. The mall fest is beginning. Got the taunt. Got another kill. There lasers coming in. Oh boy. Can we get a stun? If we get a stun, then we get a taunt. And then we kill. <laughs> I actually picked up all of those kills. <laughs> uh, I, I legit just kill stole all of those. Okay, now we get the button. I mean, sure. I mean, but how? Look, maybe we ignite for movement speed. No, we can't. <laughs> The Teemo's rooms are too much, even with my swiftness and uh, uncleansing. Oh, you know what I've always wanted to try? I've always wanted to buy uh, this item, Cosmic Drive. Can I do it? Okay, I'm doing it. No, it's so int. It's so int. I can't do that. It's so bad. It's actually so bad. But Banshee's well. It's so bad. I, I, I... It's so bad that I like it. 
I'm doing it. <laughs> don't tell my team, okay? Just, just don't tell my team. Just shh. Be, be, be very quiet. Maybe they won't realize. They won't realize I'm running Cosmic Drive, Shen. <laughs> hey, it gives me 20, 30 ability haste. That's ultimate cooldown down, bro. Yep. I'm buying it for the ult cooldown. That's what I'm... That's how I'm motivating it. That's the, that's the lie that I'm gonna tell myself. I bought it for the ult cooldown. Trust. <laughs> Doesn't Cosmic Drive work on Udur? Does that sound troll or not? I kind of feel like it would work on Udur. Okay, we're gonna chill. Yeah, Vayne is here, I'm sorry as well. We just keep the wave buffed and then we look mid lane. I mean, there's no way I can kill the Vayne. Just Vayne after all. Like the, the 1v1 duelist AD carry with Kraken Slayer. So I'm not gonna even attempt it. I have enough movement speed to run away. So it's not a problem. I just don't. I can't go in. Hey, I'm taking down towers. The split push Shen. How much AP do I have? 133! Look at that fat damage. Boom. Okay, and then we get the shield, uh, the ultimate uh, dragon movement speed buff. And after that, we will be the fastest on the planet. Wait a minute. Wait a minute! Hetkinen! Cosmic Drive is onto something! Hold up! Yo! Yo, I'm actually shocked right now. I, I, I genuinely don't know what happened. Like, is this item. Wait. Wait a moment. What was that? I might have just. Just found some secret tech that I didn't know about. Oh, what? Is it the Abyssal Mask? It's the Abyssal Mask, actually. It has to be the Abyssal Mask. Ain't no way, ain't no way I just did that with Cosmic Drive. What? I have a Knight's Vow, man. Hold up. Hold the phone. <laughs> Let me out. <laughs> okay, see you in the last game. <laughs> what was that? I'm so confused, but <laughs> but okay. Greetings and welcome to the last game of how to actually climb to master with Shen. In this game, we have a couple of options. For our runes, we went for the standard Shen page, except once again, I'm running unflinching. Because I really do not like going Mercury Threads. I don't think they're a good item. And I think Unflinching is just pretty valuable as a rule. For my secondary, I'm taking Cheap Shot Ultimate Hunter. And now for the build, we're running Ghost Ignite. Because I generally think these are the probably the best spells right now on Shen. I just don't see that much value out of Flash over Ghost. Because Ghost allows you to do more stuff. Since we're going Frostfire Gauntlet first item. Or at least that will be our Mythic. We will have that potential of sticking onto targets. Uh, Jin should buy items. Yeah, Dora should. It's gonna be a little bit like late to lane. And by the way, this game is played around 200 LP, Master ELO. There was one Grand Master player, all the others were Master players. So, a very good indication of what kind of games you should expect uh, once you reach that elusive Master tier. The matchup is a difficult one, guys. It's a difficult one. Darius matchup. One of the most feared top laners, one of the most hated top laners in my opinion. And uh, I do agree with them. Like, it, it, it can be quite frustrating to play versus a Darius. But sometimes you just gotta play towards your strengths. <laughs> Wait, all the time you have to play towards your strengths. Sometimes I wonder what I'm even saying in these commentaries, man. <laughs> but, anyways, you have to realize what your opponents. Hey, he got a ward level 1. Yeah, he got he hit level two from the first wave. That was quite uh, dangerous, actually. He could have could have probably chunked me out there quite a lot because I didn't even realize that he had killed a bard. 
I'm just gonna last hit these minions. Generally, it is not even that good to crash uh, wave 2, in my opinion. Because, because what can Darius get out of this? He can maybe go get a deep ward or something. And then what? Like, like what does he do then? Uh, I feel like now the wave is in a much better position for me. Yeah, Darius could be there. But like, sure he can recall and buy what? Maybe boots? He can buy boots, I guess. That's what he can do. Usually when you want to do this cheater recall stuff, you want to recall on wave 3. Okay, he's back. He probably got a deep ward down. He didn't get any jungle camps because his last hit number did not go up. It was a 12. The enemies have knowledge of us. Oh, actually, Shaker could gank me here, for sure. I have to be really careful. I, I, I can't, like, look, 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 look. Ramos is bot side, right? So, so, <laughs> that leaves us with Shaker being top side. And you already know it's a face as Flash goes Darius. This guy wants to go in. So I can never use my E in this lane. Look at how he is freezing, by the way. No, okay, there's Shaker already. I'm just gonna... Use my W to block the backstab damage and then run away. And then we're gonna use our favorite ward. To see Shaco over there. Shaco places a ward down. Uh, it's hard for us to go for this farm. Okay, he hits the face rush. It's quite a lot of damage that I took. I could have evaded the Q. With my E. In general, you have to be like really careful with your E usage in the Darius matchup, right? You you can't like ever use E unless Darius has used his apprehend. If you just E in randomly, that is how you completely end the game, because you will like you will just die every time. Uh, Darius is so strong in extended one v ones, and now with the durability update, the one v ones are going to be extended all the all the time. He has the power to kind of stick onto you with Ghost Flash, and then in this case, Faces as well. I really want to get that cannon, by the way. Oh. And I'm gonna E out instantly. I don't want to take any damage. After he has used Apprehend, you can freely use E. But the worst thing that can happen is if you E and he cancels it with Apprehend, then you're just dead moose meat. That, that, that's what's gonna happen. So we're gonna play it patiently, we're gonna get some farm. That is the classic Shane way into this. Uh, more difficult matchups. Gonna pick up some last hits here. Nice dodge on the Q as well. Gonna hit the range minion there. Let's look at bot lane. Uh, Kog'Maw has a CS advantage, but other than that, they are fine. I still have some, except all the other stuff doesn't have flash. Maybe he wants to um, recall here. You know what I could do if the minions follow me? I can. Okay, yeah, it's not happening. I thought maybe if the minions keep aggroing onto me, I can look for another freeze, but it's really not possible. He could be staying here and trying to hit me. Okay, he's not. I'll be recalled. I'm gonna stay in lane, because I have no way to get a good recall off. Now, this is just me doing the classic uh, never recalling strategy, and then at some point I will have to take a suboptimal recall, but <laughs> that's gonna be a problem for future pet, right? Uh, I just want to get as much farm as possible, then ult to a lane, and then we buy our items. Then we will lose two waves, because the wave will be frozen right here uh, when Darius is back to lane. This is not good, by the way. This is just me foreseeing what will happen. I'm looking intensely at the mid lane right here. Ooh. Yep. Okay. Now I'll go get a ward somewhere. What would be useful? Look at... By the way, this Darius is gonna be freezing on me non-stop. I could... Um, I'm just gonna go for the scuttle. I, I can't overextend there. Like, I think Darius will just kill me. He's gonna be freezing the wave, like I said, for the next uh, 20 minutes or something. I'm gonna pick this up. You know, we could go for redemption this game. That, that could be a viable... Did he... Hey, he let it crash. So we get a recall of... How, far, how nice of him, to be honest. Let me get my bummies seen there. And then we look at Alistar. Lord Ackerman. Okay, we got a kill. 
Double kill? Can we kill Shaco as well? <laughs> this is a little bit difficult. Is Shaco still there? No, there, no way. I'm gonna place a control ward here, is that good? Sure. Ah, oh, <laughs> Darius got two tower platings, and he's gonna be a third. Oh, Jin is going to die. Maybe should recall instead of walking. We can kill this guy. Probably. With no ignite, or is it just gonna be a 1v2 from Darius? Yeah, he got the three tower platings with the Sheen. I'm gonna back off here and now I'm gonna uh, force this freeze. I can't let him go unpunished here. I'm using my passive shield all the time to mitigate damage that I'm taking from the minions. And now we go into push to drop minion aggro so that they aggro onto my minions. We have two kills, but Darius got uh, two kills worth of gold in top lane as well. <laughs> So we're quite even actually, and when he comes back to lane, he's gonna have the gold advantage. So we're not strong enough to fight him, especially since we don't have our summoner spells. Dar Darius really wants to fight now, like he really wants to fight me. I wish we could deny this cannon minion. We might be able to. Ah, it's gonna be close. I think Darius will make it to lane before the cannon minion dies. Come on casters, focus. Yeah, he came back to lane. Ooh. That was really bad. I didn't even get the last hits and I got hit by the Q. At least that was already full HP. So. Oh, he's going Divine Sunderer. How will I ever 1v1 this? The answer is you don't 1v1. Oh, it wasn't enough. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> when the damage just isn't not enough to last hit. Uh, Arius is over there. Don't walk into him. Hello. Okay, Darius is going into our jungle. I'm gonna push the wave, I guess. He's taking our Grompilus. Mr. Grompilus! 1500. I can dash over the wall. I was trying to bait him to pass over and then I will blast cone him away. The wave is really bad for me. Ah, uh, oh, we just get absolutely CC'd. What? He still died! <laughs> nah, ain't no way, brother. Ain't no way. Oi, 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 oi. That's a clone. And Darius takes first tower. Man, sometimes I feel like ulting is like really bad. Because <laughs> the, the top players just take your entire tower every time. <laughs> Look at him, man. It's not even fair. He's gonna pick up 3k gold in top lane. Okay, that's me exaggerating, but like... I mean, maybe I should be running teleport or something. I don't know, fam. This guy is Omega Turbo type now. Okay, smash them. You know what Darius could do? He could run straight to Dragon. In order to get a fight. I'll respect him if he does. But his team kind of entered, so he's probably gonna come back to top lane. Okay. You know, I think this is a fantastic game for redemption. The other build we could go for... Ooh. Yeah, I think I'll go for redemption. It's like... Okay, just, just so you understand. I, I've said this many times, but... You don't fight the Darius. You never fight him. You, you never fight him. 
Like, you will never win a 1v1 versus this guy. There is no point. There is simply no point in fighting versus him. Now, that might seem boring, but that's just a straight fact. You can never beat him in a 1v1. He has a Divine Sunderer, and he's Darius, okay? So what you do is, you clear the waves, you suck it up, and you ult the bot lane. <laughs> we got 20 on ulti. Oh no, the goon squad is rolling, I don't have my ultimate yet. Could be a um, lucidity game. If I'm being honest. Uh oh. I got the slow. I should be able to kill. Hello, I DC'd. Hey, no way. Okay, I got to kill while DC'd. What was that, bro? <laughs> oh no, it's a, it's a disaster, guys. It's an absolute disaster. Uh, as I was saying, I could go lucidity. Where are my lucidity boots? This is just for extra CDR and more ultimates. Hmm. I gave a shutdown, that was not good. That was not good at all. They have a they have insane scaling by the way. They have they have a Kassadin and a Kogmov. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's gonna be a difficult one. Okay, but you know, getting master ain't easy. We have to show you the struggles. The real struggles. My I'm like yeah, because Night's Bow is not good here. Uh, because like, you can't reduce Darius ultimate true damage, right? <laughs> but you can heal. You can heal your team. Do they have that kind of poke that we could heal? I mean, the other option would be to kind of go back to my Cosmic Drive build that we in kind of accidentally invented last game. But I don't think we can afford to go for that. I W there to block any potential slow and then E through him so that he can't E me. Uh, Alright, I mean, I guess. You gotta be very careful, careful when you're dealing with this Darius. We can look at bot lane now. Pacers all start going in. Bok, that's a kill for me. Probably get this guy as well. We have a snare for sure. Right, Jin W coming up soon. Right. Nice combo. <laughs> he keeps going! <laughs> okay. We're losing a lot in top lane by the way. I'm gonna hit recall. Redemption. We need it. Ace up. What other items could be good? Like, I would love to say Anathemas, but then when you look at their cop, they have so many damage dealers. Like, yeah, I can put it on Kog'Mav, but then they're still gonna be Kassadin. Although Kogma is probably the one that's going to be killing me. But then you have Darius. Uh, Anathemus is good, but it's only really good if they have one main damage dealer that you're worried about. I if they didn't have Darius, like let's say they had a tank top laner, but they never have a ta tank top laner. I swear, like no one plays tanks. Legit. Like no one ever plays tanks. Where is my season 7 Shen versus Maokai matchup in the top lane? Where is my Sunfire Cape Zack matchup in the top lane, huh? I'm tired of playing versus these damage dealers, brother. I want that wet noodle top lane fight. 
No right, 10 seconds on ultimate. I can recall by uh, ability haste. Oh, hee hee! Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I'm so glad I looked at map. <laughs> I, I, I just saw Darius's icon next to me and I was like, wait a minute. Let me save this guy. He's dead, right? Wait. She's not dead. She's not dead! <laughs> In no way she lived with... Like, how broken are towers, by the way? And how unbroken are my towers? <laughs> no, it's not even enough to finish redemption. Oh, but... Oh no, bro. He just bare him up split pushing. Okay, Ramos. Engage turbo thrusters. No, can't make it. I have redemption on back, but I need to go to Drake. Oh, but... I don't know. Darius is just perma split pushing and it's working because I'm Shen and I keep going. This is this is the one of the problems with Shen. I guess my champion has counter play. Ah, never thought about that one. Let's just take it. I will taunt the Shaco when he goes stealth. Trust. Get out, get out, don't fight it. Renata is probably gonna ult. The handshake is coming in. Alright, I can pick up one minion and then build my redemption. Whoop. Once we get redemption, then our job is to be a support. Legit, we're gonna be a support. Okay, this guy is going... Man, I mean, I feel like we kinda needed a lock at this game instead of this. Kim tank. Mm. Well, now we have a game tank, Alistar. I'm not one to complain. We have a uh, stand united ready for our team. We have to stop them from taking Baron. Like if they get Baron this game becomes really hard. And they, they are not in a position where we should allow them to take Baron. Like they, they have no no right on that. I'm just clearing. I'm just a workman. Clearing my waves. And from an educational standpoint, what can I say in this position? Like, you just clear the waves and you look at your team. You try to evaluate the situation at every point. You don't want to waste your ultimate, but you want to kind of use it at the right time to bait. Shaco is so, such an annoying champion, but I guess that's why he's a clown. She's designed to be this way. Just built, built annoying. If someone, uh, Cassidy should come here. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just summoned him. <laughs> like, I, I was checking, there were three people mid lane. There was a Seiko at Baron. So there has to be one member somewhere else. Oh, he. He. I'm glad I had Oracle's lens on, man. It just gave me enough time. By the way, okay, we can do this now. Right? We can do it. There were two bot lane. Hmm. I guess we don't have DPS because Jin is not a DPS champion. Maybe he took my Krugs. No, he didn't. I'll try to get this. I have to look at where Cassidy was going. If I give him these Krugs, I'm an Inter. I have to... Like... Gold on me is not worth much. I have to redemption here because I think he would dive me otherwise. Such a small heal though. Because I'm not running revitalize. I have to back off. Just good me business. Oh no. Oh, I just need it. I mean 
Ah, this engage, man. Okay. We're gonna need some miracles here if we want to win the game. What's the eye? Okay, the miracles that I was talking about. <laughs> but can I? I can't, right? I can't do anything here. Check your Q. The Shaco boxes are annoying. One minute until Cloud Track. Can do it. Well, what's my build? What's my items look like? What, what do I need here? I mean, we could build the Knights Vow. Wow. Oh, this is so difficult. Anathemas has value as well. I'm gonna build the Knights Vow. Wow. I need to keep my team alive, I think. Full, full redemption, full support. Oh, I'm pretty sure I should put it on Victor. I think I can trust Victor for this game. Or actually, I just need to trust him. Just blind, blind trust right now. The Darius is a big problem. It's a big hacking problem. Cast the top lane. We take this now. Yeah, we can we can waste no time here. We have to take it. Take it now. Take it now. Oh, my redemption kind of baited them in. Okay, at least we got the Drake, but. It's very difficult. Wait, Kassadin didn't even fight. <laughs> Kassadin is just ending the game. We need TP. Okay. Good one. Good one until. <gasps> come on! Come on, Victor. Big. Big. I took so much damage, like I was just one shot. I have ulti. But I don't know if I think they already did it. They do it really fast. I mean I mean we're gonna need a miracle to win this one. Uh I don't even know if Cloud Soul is gonna help us win. I feel like the, I mean, it's gonna help us win, but it's, it's definitely not guaranteeing us to win. It's just gonna make us faster. I kinda don't... I don't know if I like Jin in this comp. I don't really know what, what I don't like about this comp. Maybe it's just the fact that the enemies have Giga scaling champs and we don't. We needed to smash them in the early game. Like, way harder than we did. Because they, they have just... Like the utmost scaling. They have the probably three best scaling champions for their lanes. Let's fight, let's fight, let's fight for this. I don't have ult by the way. I mean <laughs> I thought I had ult. <laughs> but th that didn't even need to be. Can I move? Apparently no. Ah, uh, I felt like I was sna snared for so long. Ah, uh, it's over. It's all over. Huh, did you actually think you would win every game on your way to master? No, no. You're gonna have some losses too. Even if you're 7-1 and one at some point, you're still gonna lose games. But so what? We just delete this from memory and we go again, we try again, and that is how you actually climb. 
See you in the last game, this time for real. Greetings and welcome back to the last game of how to actually climb to master. Which end? Now, I was supposed to play Redemption, okay? I had it all planned out in the master game. I would play Redemption, right? I would play a supportive Shen playstyle. But then, last game happened and I had that outplay with the Cosmic Drive. And then I realized, what if Cosmic Drive is actually good? And I theory crafted. During, during the queue times, I went, okay, okay, what is the Cosmic Drive build? Look, we go Frostfire Gauntlet first item, right? Massively good first item, ability haste, armor, magic health. And then we bust out Cosmic Drive as our second item for 30 ability haste. And then the thing is that the spell dance, damaging a champion with three separate attacks or spells, grants movement speed, ability power, Frostfire Gauntlet, Snowbind actually triggers as one of the damaging abilities or attacks because Snowbind deals spell damage, okay? So then you only need one auto attack and an E or two auto attacks or then then auto attack and, uh, and, uh, and an Ignite or something like this. And then you already have the Cosmic Drive power. Oh wait, she's Fiora. Guys, sorry, I forgot, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, never mind you. I don't think you can see Fiora level 1. <laughs> okay, I have to be really careful, I can't give her the vital. If I give vital, it's over, man. She will get healed and it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be really bad. We'll have to back off for now. Is this already the second wave? She's gonna hit level 2 here, right? Yeah. I waste my blade. Okay, we chill. Anyways, we're trying out the Cosmic Drive technology this game. No redemption stuff. We're going for pure fun. And for my runes, I went back to the basics. Cheap shot ultimate hunter. We're still uh, taking unflinching because I do not want to go Mercury's threads and they have Morgan Ariana. Uh, also, Fiora will have uh, attack speed slow. Stuff like this. So unflinching will be really valuable. I think in general, unflinching is actually a really good rune that I might have overlooked in the past, but I do now think that it's it's good. Uh, we're gonna just have to let this wave crash. We lost a lot of minions, but at least we got the experience. That's all that matters. Or not all that matters, but mostly what matters. It's gonna look for... Okay, he missed it. We get the cannon, beautiful. Yeah, okay, she uses parry to... I'm ghosting. <laughs> she <laughs> That's the power of the ghost, man. Uh, like, did you see, by the way, how I taunted her under tower? Like, you must have seen that. Like, you have to be picking up on this stuff that I do. So, I'm looking at her, like, she walked up into tower range while auto-attacking this caster minion that was here. And when the caster minion is at... Uh, the la lowest level, like at last hit range, I know she's gonna be going for it again, because she already did it once. So then I just wait for her to go for that caster minion and taunt her immediately. It's it's like uh, what I talked about last game about the kind of auto attack pattern that champions have. You just do that over and over again, I don't, we have no way to catch. Okay. It's fine. We already have enough gold for Bummy Cinder on our next pack. And Rengar might be... I'm pinging my E cooldown. Ooh! No, I don't have enough range. No, <laughs> it's a disaster. <laughs> what have we done? Okay, we purchased control ward. Is the wave completely screwed? Is it pushing towards me? Yes, it is. There's more blue minions than red minions. Oh no, oh no. Ah, if I taunted faster, I could kill the Fiora. Now she has two kills. 
Ah, yay. This guy had a recurve bow. Is she going uh, Nasha's tooth first item? Probably. Okay, so we had a great start to the laning phase. Then we had Rengar come in, and then we eat the 2v2, which we could have won. That, that was like just micro bad from me. Like, uh, if, I, if I used E faster, I was being too patient with it. I could have killed the Fiora. And if I kill Fiora, I can maybe turn it around on the Diana as well. Now she's back with Tear and a... What is that called? Pickaxe? Hmm. I mean, I should never hit that down, by the way. <laughs> that should, like, never hit. That, that, that's just me, like, being completely disrespectful. Because if she parries there, I take, like, what? 60% of my HP. Okay, beautiful bot lane. We have ulti. I'm gonna ping mid now. Mid lane now. We can go for a play. Look at that setup. Bomba! Perfect execution. And the reason why I like ult in mid lane here is because it's closer to top lane. So we just get to walk back to top lane and we don't lose three tower platings. Maybe only two. <laughs> uh, oh no, I was kidding man. But if she actually takes two... Nah, it's over. Season's doomed. <laughs> Demolish is doomed. <laughs> I, I, Demolish is the bane of Shen players, man. That that rune is, uh, it's not very fun. I guess Riot needs to reward players for hitting towers, right? Okay, it's okay. Cool, calm, and collected. Fear is just gonna jump over the wall. I want to crash this. I'm thinking about the boost that I want to go for this game. Mm, steel caps, obvious option. Maybe we'll do. Swiftness are another, but I think steel caps is better. I can recall here. Oh, hello. Since I choose to clear this ward, I'm no longer gonna. Re okay, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, she black shields. The, I, I think I dealt damage to the Morgana. She's gonna be... It's my kill. What? Really? It got executed. No. I thought I had it for sure. But I guess the damage was so f far gone already. Ah. I, I thought it was my kill. I think I deserved it. The game didn't think I deserved it. 40 seconds on ultimate. Uh, we are... How many ultimate hunter stacks? Three already. Quite nice. Really nice actually. Let me get that. Let me get that. Uh, we need to shove one more wave out. It's kind of scary with Fiora because I think she can catch up to me. I'm not, I don't have... Um, ghost or anything. I think she could have gone in there. Ah, I'm so scared. I'm gonna go in this bush and recall. She seems to be showing the wave. Yep, she already pushed it enough. It's gonna be slow pushing towards me. So I can recall. Um, I can buy that steel caps that I was talking about. I have one second on ultimate. But if I ult here, I'm gonna lose so much top lane. I'm gonna lose so much top lane if I ult. I'm not gonna ult, I, like, I really can't. I, I generally can't ult there. Because because if I ult, uh, like, Fiora will get the tower. Like, she will actually just kill the tower. <laughs> so I'm just gonna have to let my Rengar die. That is the way it goes. I got my Empire Q there. Surprisingly. Now we back off since I used my abilities. They're on cooldown. I was, I was uh, like proactively using W there to shield myself. 
from any retaliation. Mm. I go in like crazy. Okay, we chill. This is Warlord, by the way. I have taunt now. She doesn't have parry yet. Hello? <laughs> uh, I go in? No. Okay, I don't go in. <laughs> I was dancing. <laughs> Maybe I should have gone in. Let me just pick up these last hits. Look mid lane. Okay. There's a skirmish. I like it. Oh, look at. Okay. It's nice. Diana is dead. I'm here. I'm here. I mean, we don't need to force anything. Kaiser is looking at bot lane. I no longer want to ult. Because <laughs> Fiera will once again take my entire tower if I ult. Hmm. She's back with vengeance this time. Vengeance. Oh, I am vengeance. Oh, nice block. By the W. Just got it in time. Mm. Very well played by the Kaiser. Completely proving who is the better AD carry. Ah. Look at this taunt. No, she's gonna parry it. Tower plating didn't die. Hmm. Am I gonna get dove here? Am I gonna have to ult? What am I gonna do? I'm looking, I'm looking, respectfully. And then we ghost. Ah, <laughs> we got rooted. Okay, the boys are going in. I'm ghosting. Ah, close. How much is... Uh, I need one wave. Yeah, just give me this. Fiora takes the whole top side, but... That's the, <laughs> that's the way the news goes. Yep. And uh, now we recall. Plop. Pick up our Frostfire, and then we Cosmic Drive, and then we have no ultimate cooldown anymore. If we can be, buy another Control Ward. Uh, guys is going top lane, so I'll just go bot lane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I actually really like the idea of this Cosmic Drive build. I don't know why, but it really tickles my fancy. It feels like demon, demon fire, but then the thing is that demon, demonic embrace is good. It gives you damage, but it doesn't give you dirty ability haste like Cosmic Drive does. Let's compare these. Okay, same, uh, approximately the same out of raw AP. Then we have uh, 250 less health, but we have ability haste and movement speed. And the ability haste is quite a lot. 30 ability haste is not, not a small amount, okay? So it's quite a lot. And then we have differing passives. So the other one has the... Okay, I wanna see this. I wanna see this. Kaisa! Oh, Bard went in for the... Can we? I mean, there ain't no way that I can fight this, right? I, I should never win this. But then again... I'll never know if I didn't try. I'll never know if I don't try. Hmm, I don't think I can. <laughs> I think she just has too much everything. Like, she just does more stuff, I think? I mean, she's the duelist here, not me. But, maybe I am the duelist. <laughs> maybe I am the duelist after all. Just stand in my W. Bye bye, duelist. <laughs> Let me pick these up real quick. Nice. Okay, what does Cosmic Drive build out of? 
We have the Ether Wisp and then we have Forbidden Idol. Ether Wisp gives me movement speed for our Phoenix Code, it's not Forbidden Idol, Phoenix Code. I can ult on this. Must out. Get the Morgana. Oriana ults. I'm all good. She's not gonna kill me. Blop! Enemy team goes blop! And I'm gonna run for Herald. I'm gonna call that this is the right play. This guy has a Lich Bane and a Neverfrost and he's 7 and 0. What a chad. You can use your Q before um, you, do, you do your last auto attack because the Q has a travel time, right? So this is a small optimization that you can do to increase DPS because your Q cooldown will be lower. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna last hit this. No, but got Okay, but I get the head out itself. And I will just slam it top lane. I will just slam it, maybe. No, I don't think I need to slam it. 40 seconds until her, like, look at this, there's mountain break in 40. So we can slam the herald when it gets a bit closer to that 40 second mark. We could be really greedy here. You know, I could be really greedy. Okay, Dyna is still top lane. Oh, I have to ghost out. <laughs> yeah, was it worth? I got 30 gold for that. Was it worth it? Expert, was it worth it? Wait, Frostfire Diana. I'm just clearing this. Is she? Uh, she's looking to kill me, actually. She's gonna come back to the wave. Rampage. Unless we see her here. Does she want to kill? Okay, I'll give her the pleasure. She can come fight me. <laughs> Triple kill on the guys. My goodness. Five seconds on all. Uh, I think I might be getting attacked. I mean, surely we can't win this. So we're just gonna have to eat out. <laughs> Notice that I taunt right before I ult there. Almost at our cosmic power spike. Intergalaxy brain. Uh, 1 minute 30 on ultimate. Twist of fate is doing that. Oh, we have the double global scomp. And we have the submarine. And we have another submarine with Kaisa ultimate. This was actually perfect game for Shen. Even though I died once. But that was that unfortunate early fiesta. Okay, fight me. Fight me, I'm right here. Try me. <laughs> Rengar. <laughs> okay, this twist the fate. The bane. Vengeance. I think this uh, uh, slightly might have turned away from a tutorial based game into a more. Uh, me just enjoying the win kind of game. I hope it's okay. Sometimes you just gotta enjoy the ride, you know. When your team is winning, you just wanna be in the moment and get that feeling. So I'm sorry if I'm not dropping knowledge 24 second, uh, 200 words per minute. I did that already in games one and two. So I'm trying my best to just enjoy this one. I just want to finish my cosmic drive. Uh, then I want to look for my ultimate on to maybe we could do another submarine play with Rengar ultimate or then then uh, Kaisa backline delivery all these fun ones or then the twisted fate backdoor ultimate combination or then our ADC DCs and we make it a 4v5 for content okay that's a good one I hadn't thought about that one before surely Fjord doesn't notice me taking this okay <laughs> she's really angry she's really angry <gasps> this rendered that completes the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something new, and I really appreciate you for watching this far. See you guys next time.